In this video, we're going to talk about macros. Uh, macros can be used to run programs or sequence of items or logic in the background of an object. For example, we're going to set up two different types of macros. The first one is going to be move robot to a safe position, and we're going to set it as this button right here, which is labeled tool one right now. And then the second item is going to be a logic only, in which we're going to set as tool one, in which we're going to toggle on and off a laser guide for the actual robot itself. So to create a macro, the first thing you need to do is create a program. So we're going to go to select and inside select, we're going to go create and we're going to create a new program. And I always like to label my macro. So macro underscore, and then I'm going to call this safe position. Now this is a movement. So under detail, we want to make sure the group mask is one. We're also going to go under subtype and we're going to switch it to macro. So let's go into end. So it brings us into the program. So first thing I want to do is make sure I'm in the correct tool frames. So I'm going to add new instruction, miscellaneous, remark. And my remark is going to be the frames. And then I'm going to add my actual frame. Now that I have in my frames, I'm going to now move my robot to that safe position. So I'm going to add move point. And we go there as a joint movement, and we're going to use the point registry that we have set up already. So I'm going to go point registry number one, which will take me to the home position, and then point two will take me to the safe position. So this is our safe position. So now you have to be careful to make sure that the robot is out of the way of all obstructions before you press that button. So you have to be careful about sending a robot to a certain position when it's maybe over here because it could crash into an object. So this is where I get it close and then you click that button. So that might be something you want to comment about when it comes to the actual macro. So now that this is set up, let's actually now assign it to a button. So we're going to go to Menu, Setup, Macro, and I'm going to assign it to macro number one. And you can see I have no macro set up right now. I cleared them all out. There was one for a gripper that used to be here. This is where I'm going to call what my macro or instruction name is. Go to Safe, Pause, go to Safe Position. Here's the program. So I'll go over to Program, we'll go to Choice, and you'll see that nothing shows up right now because it's looking for an actual program. So if I switch to F2, which is macro, here's my macro safe position. Next, go to choice. We have a couple different types of macros we can set up. We can set up to a digital output. We can set it to a motion frame, or we can do a user key or shift user key. Now, the difference between that is this is a user key or it is a shift user key. Shift user keys are used for motion groups. User key is for non-motion groups. That's why it's important to make sure that you have that asterisk or the one where it is. So we want this as a movement, so we always want to hold shift and then the click the user key in order for that to work. So then now that we have that, we're going to assign it to user key number one. So if you hover over here, you notice it's number one, number two, number three, four, and then it goes five, six, seven. Okay, so we're going to assign it to number one. So now that I have this all set up, I can now move my robot out of the position. There we go. So now it's twisted. Now if I go shift to one and it's asking, okay, we're in edit mode. So let's just end that edit mode. And then if I hit shift to one, now it moves back to that safe position. And notice how we're not in any programs, or even if we are in a program. So if I open up, say, pick up program here, and it doesn't matter where I'm at, I can go to, say, this position right here, home position. So it's going down there. Oh, I want to go back to my safe position. From this position, I can just go shift to one. There we go. So I just abort it all and then shift tool one. It brings me back to that safe position. So that's a macro, a movement macro. You can set up a macro for picking up something to move out of the place for a weld tip cleaning. 
there's all different things you can set up a macro for. So that is a motion group. So the second thing we're going to do is a non-motion group. So we're going to toggle a laser on and off. And in previous videos, we set up a couple of digital outputs. Digital output number seven, we have toggle as a laser on and off. Again, this is just a simulated item right now. So we're going to toggle this item on and off by a click of the button. So I'm going to go to select and I'm going to go create and go to keyboard. And I'm going to call this macro laser on off. Then we're going to go to detail. Forgot that we can't have a character in there. So let's go back in there. Laser toggle. And then let's go to our detail because this is a non-motion item. This is digital logic only. We're going to add an asterisk to the motion group. So there's no motion of the robot. Then right here where it says subtype, let's switch this to macro. Then let's go to end. So it brings us into the program. So now when we do a toggling, we have to check to see if it's on or off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple headings here, and I'm also going to add a couple lines. So I'm going to add maybe like 15 lines or so. So insert maybe 15 here. All right, so then I'm going to go a heading. So I'm going to go remark, and I'm going to go toggle laser on and off as my remark. There we go. So toggle laser on and off. So the first thing we need to do is actually see if the actual laser is on first. So I'm going to go new instruction, remark, and then we're going to do check output is going to be our first item. There we go, check output. And then we're going to look at that output. So we're going to make a decision. So if r, so if equal to, if r digital output number seven, is equal to on, then we're going to jump to label, we'll say one. Then I'm going to go down. If it's on, then we're jumping to the label. If it's not on, then we continue down the program and we're going to actually toggle it on. So this is where we're going to toggle on. So miscellaneous remark, toggle laser on. So I go new instruction, IO, digital output equal to. So digital output number seven, which is our laser, and we're going to turn it on. So it's checking if the laser is on, we're going to jump past this right here. If it's not on, so if it's off, it's going to bypass my if statement and go down to here, which is going to now turn it on. So once I have it turned on, I want to bypass what I'm going to put next. So I go jump label, so new instruction, jump label number two so that we bypass turning it off. Okay, so right here now I'm going to toggle off. Toggle laser off. So now I'm going to have the heading because if it's on, I want to jump to label one. So I'm going to go new instruction, label one. And then I'm going to toggle that laser off. So new instruction, digital output and digital output number seven, and we're going to set it equal to off. Then we're going to go end, so the end is going to be label two. Did actually pretty good with uh, guessing how many lines here, so I'm going to just get rid of that one line. Otherwise, it's going to drive me crazy. All right, so again, when we press the button, it's going to look to see if digital output number seven is equal to on. If it is equal on, it jumps to label one, so here's label one, turns it off, bypasses this, turns off that uh, program. If it's digital output number seven is off, it bypass number four, goes right to digital output number seven is equal to on. So it goes from off to on, jumps to label two, here's label two, ends. So there's two ways of going out, whether it's on or off. So now that we have this, let's go to menu, setup macro go down to number two laser on and off right here we're going to make that macro choice so again i have a previously made program called laser but i want to go to macro here's macro and here's my macro laser toggle this one because it is not a user or a motion group it is a digital logic group 
we don't have to hold shift. So instead of using shift user key, we're going to just go user key and we're going to assign it to user key number two. So then I'm going to go to my ins and outs so we can actually see that motion, that laser turn on and off. So if I click tool number two, we're done editing. So hit enter. So if I hit tool number two, notice how that laser turns on, click it again, turns off, on, off. So I can toggle that on and off based on an actual user key. So that's macros, whether it is a motion group or a just logic group, you can turn it on or off. Just make sure that you have your user key or shift user key set up correctly and also the motion groups set up correctly when you set up the actual macro.